The NFL has been up to its eyes in public relation issues over the past decade or two. Even as a diehard football fan, there's no denying it. It has been a litany of things. Everything from player safety concerns, to the player conduct policy, to some of the complaints that fans, and players alike for that matter, have had with the way the game has evolved over the years. Now, I'm not gonna get all doom and gloom like the people who claim the NFL is a dying business, because if you ask me, that's nonsense. I'm just saying from a PR standpoint, it has been just about as tumultuous as it could get for a league that essentially has earned a license to print money at this point. But that being said, every once in a while, we come across a story of triumph, and the tale of Larry Grantham, the former New York Jets star, is certainly one of them, as well as a cautionary tale of some of the pitfalls that existed for the league's former players who played pro football at a time when financial security was hardly a guarantee. So let's take a look back at who Grantham was on the field, and how one of his most prized earthly possessions, his Super Bowl III championship ring, literally saved his life. Like I mentioned, Larry Grantham made his name as a member of the New York Jets. He played right outside linebacker and was an absolute force for the Jets, winning team MVP honors in 1971 and notching 10 all AFL selections in his illustrious career, most of which took place before the merger. Interestingly, he's actually one of only 20 players to have competed in the American Football League for its entire 10-year existence, and one of only 7 AFL players that have played their entire careers in one city. Just for a point of reference for some of our younger football fans out there, Grantham's career spanned from 1960 until 1972, only briefly coming out of retirement in 1974 for one last lap around the sun in the upstart World Football League. This was so long ago that he actually played for the Jets before they actually were the Jets, as his first couple of seasons took place during the New York Titans era. And during that time, his role on the team and in the community cannot be overstated. He was a vital part of developing pro football in New York. In just nine years with Grantham as a linchpin and leader on the defensive side of the ball, New York went from being the worst team in the AFL when it was still an upstart league itself, to world champions as he led the Jets to Super Bowl glory once the AFL began matching up with the NFL League champ. Although Broadway Joe Namath gets most all the shine for that Super Bowl win, as he did walk the walk following one of the most famous guaranteed victories ever, it was really Grantham in the defensive unit that deserves the bulk of the credit. After all, he was responsible for calling all the team's defensive formations on the field, and all that unit did was stifle one of the NFL's most electric offenses of the time, holding the Colts scoreless until the last three minutes of the game, when they punched in a garbage time touchdown to narrow the gap to an eventual final score of 16-7. Even at the time when scores were much lower across the league than they are now, that is a pretty damn impressive feat. And if you ask his former teammates about how important he was to the team, well, they won't make words. Check out what former teammate Jerry Philbin told writers for the Jets team website. I always saw Larry as the captain and the leader, Philbin said. His football knowledge, the way he skirted around blockers and made tackles, he just surprised a lot of people. Pound for pound, he was the best player on the Jets. Broadway Joe, who? Needless to say, Grantham earned that Super Bowl ring. And, deservedly, he cherished it. According to a feature he had on Bleacher Report, he loved to wear it, both at home and out on the town in the following years. It didn't matter if he was in his hometown in Mississippi, where he learned the game that would become his life's work, or on one of his frequent trips to New York and New Jersey. Wherever Grantham went, the ring went. He thought of the ring as a reward for his lifetime in football, a lifetime of work shining on his finger, and he wore it proudly. But tragically, before the ring would go on to save his life, he was almost forced to give it up entirely in 2009. Grantham, who had a near 30-year battle with alcoholism, had developed throat cancer in 09, and he couldn't afford the treatment he needed to fight the nasty disease. Not without selling the ring that he loves so dearly. My folks had raised me my whole life to pay your bills. When you've got astronomical bills and you can't pay them, you try to do whatever you can to pay them, he told Bleacher Report. It was a sad day. The Super Bowl ring was something I wanted to give my kids to inherit and be proud of, but at that time, it looked like my only way out. As dire as things looked for Grantham, the ring he thought he was going to have to sell ended up serving as a lifeline for him, without him ever having to part ways with the precious sentimental piece of jewelry. Because when the ring went up for auction, one of his friends and former colleagues, David Harry from the Freedom House, a 
long-term substance abuse treatment facility in New Jersey that Grantham was both treated at and continued to work as an advocate for while in recovery, stepped in. Harry remembered all the times that he and Grantham would visit with patients who were caught in the throes of alcoholism, and Grantham would speak to them with such compassion, often taking off his prized possession to let them try it on, anything to help his fellow man. As soon as Harry learned that Grantham was trying to sell the ring, he decided that he had to help Grantham keep the ring instead, so he set out to raise enough money to buy the ring at the auction. He knew that it was a long shot, as the ring was from one of the most famous Super Bowls ever, and it was expected to fetch upwards of $45,000. Through his vast network of connections, the donations started pouring in, but as the auction approached, Harry was worried, because as impressive as it was to have raised 20 grand, it was very unlikely that it would be enough to win the auction. Things looked bleak, but then, on the weekend of the auction, two new mysterious figures who had no direct connection to Larry Grantham stepped in and saved the day. The individuals were Victor Moreno and a woman who goes by Kita. They were actually the auctioneers set to hold the bidding. Coincidentally, both Moreno and Kita were both also recovering alcoholics, and they were moved when they learned of Grantham's lifelong devotion to the Freedom House. So, they pulled the ring out of the auction, even though they had already widely publicized its sale and figured to make a very nice profit on the commission. The money Harry raised, which was supposed to buy Grantham's ring, instead was used to pay his medical bills, and Moreno and Kita subsequently put the ring back into a box and mailed it to Grantham. Kita told Bleacher Report that it was an easy decision once they learned more about Grantham's story, saying, It was people like him who helped me when I started on my journey of recovery. I can't tell you the people who came out of the woodwork telling me how much Larry helped them. Truly a moving gesture in a world that is often cold when such a large sum of money is on the line. Grantham has since passed, after succumbing to complications from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease at the age of 78. But Moreno and Kita's goodwill gave him eight more good years with his championship ring, and perhaps more importantly, kept it in his family for generations to come. Back in 2014, when Bleacher Report ran the piece, Grantham went on record talking about how the actions of Harry, Moreno, and Kita saved his life, as the treatment was able to ward off the cancer, and just how meaningful it all was. I'm a hard-nosed guy. After 13 years of football and all that stuff, you get pretty hard-nosed, Grantham said. For people to do that, it just brought tears to my eyes. It just overwhelmed me. Now, I'm hanging in there. I'm gonna be alright. I couldn't run no races. I couldn't play over maybe half a football. I'd have to wave off the second half. Clearly, even at his advanced age, he hadn't lost that edge or his sense of humor. Grantham devoted his life to three things. His family, football, and supporting people entrenched in the same battle with alcoholism that he bravely fought. And when he had his back against the wall, those same three things, his championship ring included, came together and saved his life. But hey, what's your favorite Super Bowl ring story of all time? Join us in the comments section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.